Today's topic is breaking down the false legion design and law. Sounds heavy. I like it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Way Pan. I'm Cal. I'm Sunny. We're going to take a look at pre and post heresy design. Within these segments, we'll be looking at design breakdown, design analysis, art, design versus law, and final notes. And then redesign. We're going to be focusing more on the design rather than the law part. Let's get into it. Pre heresy. All right, Sunny. This is the standard trooper of the fourth legion. Right. And I can see that he has a very dark metal compared to some of the other legions that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it's more like an iron or maybe an unrefined steel. Yep. And then we've got the way that he looks. It gives me Robocop vibes. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, okay. so um, again, like the metal, I think it's very industrial looking. He looks very standoffish as well because of the way the visor is designed. Like there are no eyes at all. Yeah. It's just a straight bar of red. And then you have hostile design with the spikes in the pauldron. Overall, he looks very hard, cold, and mechanical. Also, I'd like to note something else, which is how you noted that he doesn't have eyes. Mm. He also doesn't have a mouth, so to speak. Yeah. With the way that the grill is designed. Yes. So it looks very inhuman. Yes, it does. It, it looks like... Someone you can't have much of a connection with. Yeah. You're like, like I said, standoffish. Well, I did tell a bit of a lie, but you are right. They are called the Iron Warriors, and this isn't their standard trooper. This is a Terran trooper. Mm -hmm. So this means before they met their Primarch. I see. This is their standard pre-heresy design. I see. And he looks very similar to the previous guy. He has an even more industrial look with the hazard stripes. Still very standoffish because of the visor. Hard, cold, mechanical. And he also has this iron skull on the pauldron. Mm -hmm. And the material paired with the more pronounced features of the skull and the elongated mouth gives the symbol an air of intimidation. So it's very guarded and almost villainous. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that there's one thing that you mentioned before, hostile design. Do you mm. want to talk a little bit about hostile design? So it's exactly like the name states. It's a design that's meant to be harmful to you. Spikes, sharp things. So things that make you feel pain, either physically or through your mind, because you see a sharp thing, you feel pokey. So hostile design is a recent term for something that's been around for a long time, which is design that is meant to intimidate or essentially keep people out. It's security design. Yeah, I would agree with that. So some examples would be like bird spikes, those bars that go in between the park benches. Gates and with spikes on them. So hostile design is exactly to keep people out so it would hurt them if they tried to climb over these things or sit on these things as such. Yeah, and it's not just an aesthetic of I look scary. Yeah, it is. it does serve a purpose. It's meant to hurt you. All right, and as always, Sunny, we have the alternates right here. Yeah, so the one that catches my eye the most is the guy with the shield up. Mm -hmm. And with that, it actually makes them look like officers of the law. If space marines were police officers, mm -hmm. that's what they look like. And the dark metal paired with the smooth reflections give them a very professional and sleek look. And the skulls on the wrists, same as the Third Legion, they have also their skull instead rather than just standard skulls. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Okay. And what about this guy? Yeah, the Terminator guy. That is the Terminator, right? Yes, he yeah. is a Terminator. So uh, he has more square shapes incorporated in with him, which gives him a superimposed air of intimidation, mm -hmm. which gives you a feeling of you're overpowered by this guy. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I would imagine he's kind of like a tank, like, you know, if there well, was... Well, Terminators are kind of like tanks in yeah. of themselves. And this is an older design of Terminator armor. But once again, I feel like when we're talking about shape design, you've uh, mentioned the square shape design a lot. Do you think that there's anything particularly different about these designs? Or do you think it's all pretty much standard they, Space Marine? Yeah, fare? they do actually look quite the same, like uh, the guy with the hazard stripes, the guy with just a plain look and the Terminator. Mm -hmm. These all look like the standard pre-heresy variations of the Space Marines. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the Terminator, the Trooper, 
and, you know, the Terran Marine. But the only one that's truly quite different that expresses what this Legion is about is the one with the shield, I would say. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, just so you know, all of the Legions had those sorts of things, but they did choose to depict these guys with a shield, I think, for a specific reason. I but see. we'll get into that. Design, Design analysis. analysis. So the dark colors you used, as I mentioned earlier, it gives the air of intimidation. Mm -hmm. The chevron patterns itself, I know it's used a lot in industrial areas and again for protective purposes to get your attention. But I'm not sure what the specific symbolism is with these guys because mm -hmm. I do see chevron patterns with other marines as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I would say that that would be the main thing that we're looking at. So yellow is a very bold color. In this picture, it's quite faded because I imagine he's, you know, out in the battle to the point that it's faded, right? Yeah. But that is something that people would think of when you see yellow, bold, in your face, excitable, charges in right away. Would you say that's something that these Marines are known to do? Well, before we go into that, let's talk a little about the color psychology behind some of these things. So the reason why you're always talking about the intimidation is because that's one of Black's key psychological mm. markers. It is. Right? It has an air of intimidation, right? But the other thing is, could you comment on the industrial hazard stripe design? and what it's meant to mean. The thing with hazard stripes, it's not a design that is symbolic. It serves a purpose. It's mm -hmm. just there to signal risks and dangers. Well, you're right in that it serves a purpose, but I think that there's a slight bit more to it because there are black and yellow stripes in nature. Yeah, so I would say that's a biological response when we talk about color psychology. Mm -hmm. This would fall into that. Certain color combinations trigger certain, you know, feelings or symbols in your mind. And when you take a look at bees, black and yellow frogs or snakes, your mind goes, that's really dangerous, super poisonous, do not touch. Well, with the exception of bees, but hornets also have that patterning. Yeah. However, there is something else that I think is highly symbolic with it. Because it's known with bees and wasps, it's also known as a trait of industriousness. Ah, I see. So someone who works very hard. Yes. In fact, it is uh, used as the industrious symbol in Stellaris. It's a picture of a bee. Oh, that's... That's nice. Overall, with their color scheme and design, it communicates that they are reliable, sturdy, dangerous, and industrious. Shall we move on? Yes. Art. Right. So, Sunny, looking at this art right here, what do you have to say about the Iron Warriors? Well, it shows off that sort of cold and mechanical look right off the bat again. Because of the way that this artwork is lit, it shows that the warrior is mostly shrouded in darkness. And mm -hmm. most of the light is coming from the plasma gun itself. So it kind of gives them a feeling of someone who is very stealthy, coming in straight to do the job, and he sees his target, boom, you're gone. That's kind of the feeling I get. It's a very uh, hard and straightforward artwork. That Oh, okay. Yeah. Very hard and straightforward. Interesting. Yeah. So it doesn't have too much of a story to tell. It's just like, it just says, this guy, he's doing his job. That's what it looks like to me, at least. Interesting, interesting. Now, once again, we've got another piece of art, but unfortunately, the focus is once again on the primer. Mm. However, if you could take a look at it and tell us what you think about that. This one has a more focus on the war aspect. You've got the uh, explosions in the background. A lot mm -hmm. of expression of the steel is coming through. A lot of cold colors are being used here, especially with the blue tones of the ice in the background and as well as the uh, armor that everyone is wearing, right? Mm -hmm. So here it really shows them in their sort of full industrial aspect of the characteristics that we talked about, mm -hmm. right? So they are out there doing their jobs and they're the guys that you don't want to mess with, right? These are the people that come in when all the other plans have failed almost, right? So these are the hard hitters. Don't mess with them. That's what it looks like. Interesting. When you say these are the hard hitters, I want you to be a bit more specific. Are you saying these are the people who come in to clean up like dirty situations? Sort yeah, of yeah. Stuff that, you know, normal uh, normal situations or the, the first few soldiers that you send out, 
they 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 probably can't handle it once it hits a certain point and once it hits the boiling point these are the guys that comes in because they're they're the one with all the power and the strategy and also the strength to finish the job all right should we move on to the category that everybody loves to hear about yep design, design versus, versus law. law all right sunny based off their design what do you think their law is? Tell me a bit about them. So these are the guys that are meant to be like guardsmen, people who are put at the front to keep the order, the people who keep the order. And they're also the people that fight the hardest in the battles. And they're very reliable. They're strong. The people you rely on. So what did you mean by guardsmen, Sonny? They're like the imperial guard, right? So they're the guys who would do most of the fighting. Oh, okay. All right. Could you tell us a little about their character in the way that they're designed? I would say they're very honorable, they're humble, they're very strong in their mindset. They're people who you can rely on because when you need help, they're definitely going to show up. Okay, is there anything else? Oh, no, I think that would be it. All right, so do you think it's about time that I actually told you about the law? Of course. So you know how a lot of space marines have specializations? Tell me, would you be surprised to find out that these guys' specialization is sieges? That means like, for example, taking castles, taking fortifications, mm. trench warfare, and so on. Yeah, so very upfront and hitting hard. Well, mm, no, I wouldn't say that at all. So siege warfare has a lot of attrition elements. It's a lot of... Yeah, which is what I was trying to get at with the upfront part, like they're the anvil as a army. Yeah, the anvil rather than the hammer. Yeah. So they were known for being given the worst jobs during the Great Crusade. Makes sense. I mean, considering how they were designed, I got that impression like they're the ones doing the heavy lifting. Can you tell us a bit more about that? So we talked about how they look very industrious with the hazard stripes combined mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the iron. And these are all almost factory like elements right yeah yeah and factories, very industrial ve factory workers especially are known to be you know working long hours they're reliable because they're working in factories and also they are very on the ball so i was thinking that looking at the way they were designed especially how big they were they were someone who would just come in and constantly be reliable and do the hard jobs when you say how big they are all space marines are pretty much the same size I, okay same... i should cl clarify because I'm, I'm thinking back to the artwork where i saw the primaris primaris I, i'm sorry i meant to say primark please please forgive me okay since we've talked about the stripes i think it's important to talk about where that comes from so in the law and i'm just going to say this i i just think that it's a cop out i know that there are black and yellow themed people in history but i'm sorry i think that they went for the industrial design and then they sort of retrofitted the law to this but mm. that's meant to be the colors of his homeland oh i feel like in okay i should not say because that's more of a redesign aspect so maybe we can just no, no, just that. say it, just say yeah, it. Yeah, okay, because like hazard stripes are very fixed in, uh, in, in the eyes of society. It's very specific in its use. Yeah, and, but and it if might be a to... more modern thing because there were black and yellow heldries before, you know, during medieval times. I'm talking and about the pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like if you wanted to show black and yellow representing your homeland, I feel like that could have been explored in a crest or a different shape than chevron patterns. You yeah, know? yeah. So I, I will once again say like I think it's a bit of a cop out that yeah. they're like yeah no that's from his homeland and it's like oh okay uh, <laughs> okay so in terms of character they had a very dour feeling to them they were very unfeeling they were very sort of downtrodden almost depressed really mm. and the thing is that they were often very jealous of other legions because they would get honors where like they're like oh you know you were honored for taking this place and it's like we have been sieging this place for the last 10 right, years right yeah i i would totally understand that and the unfeeling part totally comes through with the 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 cold hard mechanical of the iron Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I do think now a lot of people will think that I've been slow rolling this one bit, which I really have, but there's one bit of law that we really have to talk about. Do you know what the word democide means? No. Democide is a specific punishment that the Romans had, and uh, this is what happened to them when their Primarch refound them. You mean when the Emperor found the Primarch? Yes, yes. Okay. So their Primarch 
punished them for not getting enough honors. And the punishment was demo side. Demo side is where the group in lots of tens had to draw straws and the person who got the short straw was beaten to death by the other nine. That doesn't... Why? That doesn't make any sense. And also, I get why they would be so depressed now. That's an extremely sadistic punishment for something they couldn't control. Like, it's kind of like group punishment in a way, where if you made one mistake, the rest of the lot gets punished. And the punishment that the rest of the lot feel is guilt for having to beat this person to death. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, that's part of the whole deal. It's meant to make them feel scarred in a way. Yeah, but I really don't like that their Primarch was the one that did this to them. And let's just say that you're not alone. Uh, Rabute Gilliman wanted to uh, sanction the uh, Iron Lord because of this. Yeah, he would be right to do so. I have to say, it was very unexpected to hear this part of the lore, considering the impression that I got from the art and the design style. Like, these are the people who were honorable and reliable. And that is very not honorable, what the Primarch did. Okay, but I'm going to pull you back a bit. But we didn't actually talk about honor that much with the way they're designed. We talked a lot about reliability, but we didn't actually talk about honor. So where was the honor part in there? Their design. It was more that reliable people tend to have honorable values. However, I think that this is where you have sort of let your emotions respond, and mm. I think that's fine. But with their design, there is no, in my opinion, parts of them where it's these are going to be yeah. good, honorable people. In fact, I would say kind of the opposite because they are so industrial. When you take a look at their design, the rivets, everything else, like everything screams industrial. It is. I won't disagree there. It is very much just very practical design. It's not flashy in any way. It doesn't have much symbolism involved in it. Yeah, yeah. And with that, what I'm saying is... Do you think it's more just your reaction to what happened rather than, you know, that yeah. not coming through in their design? I, I would say that probably is the case. All right. There's also one other law bit, which I think is very much missing from the design. And tell me if you think that I'm wrong, but they're very Greek. So their homeland is Olympia. Ah, well, I don't really see much Greek elements in yeah, their I design. Don't either. Yeah, none. Yeah, so maybe that's something we should consider for the redesign part. I was thinking about that, but we'll get to that with the redesign part. Should we move on to final, final notes. notes? All right, Sunny, do you have any final notes about these guys that you feel like hasn't been brought up during this conversation? Well, just before we mentioned that their Greek elements was not brought through, and I do think that the yellow and black elements could be brought in in a much better way. Um, other than that, I think they're pretty fitting off the law. Okay, when you say a much better way, you're saying ways other than, than just the chevron, chevron pattern. Yeah, like a different thing altogether. It could be a different type of pattern or a crest, like I mentioned. There's definitely better ways than just a chevron pattern. Okay, all right. You yeah, know, I don't have anything else to add other than you did have a very emotional reaction to the democide thing, and I think that's perfectly fine. I mm. mean, like, it makes sense, and I think a lot of the community will agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I bet they would. Shall we move on? Okay. Post-heresy. Okay, Sunny, there is a lot of other art when it comes to these guys, but this is the classic design for the Iron Warriors post-heresy. Right. And for this one, the darker metal definitely denotes the transition to evil. Horns have been added to the helmet, but it looks a little bit more knightly. I want to say that the overall design actually looks like it has a bit more character mm -hmm. compared to the previous one. It's less cold, hard, mechanical. It does have the mechanical feeling, but it's less sort of cold. Like there's a very obvious, ominous feeling to it. There is a vibe there that you can feel. And other than that, we've also got the change in the logo. It's very simple and easy to identify because it just has a combination of the original logo with the chaos symbol behind it. Mm -hmm. And there are more hostile shapes in general to show some villainous traits. Uh, again, with the horns and lots of pointy arrow-like things in the leg armor parts there. Mm -hmm. And I would say this something that's quite interesting. I'm not too sure why this is done, but 
The standard Chaos backpack seems to have a more organic shape design. They always look quite different as compared to the basic backpack. Yeah, when you say the basic backpack, you're meaning the loyalist power pack. Yeah. And one thing I want to say is you were talking about hostile design there, but does it truly look like hostile design or is it more aesthetic? Aesthetic, yes, sorry. I should rephrase. It is more aesthetic this time because it is just to show the aspect of villainy rather and the chaos symbol. It's just trying to bring more of the chaos symbol in it. Because it's it's not as spiky as the previous one where it was actually hostile design. Yeah, this is very much very clearly an aesthetic decision. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, Sonny, here is another classic design. What do you think of this guy? He's a Terminator, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so he looks very malicious with his pincers on the helmet Mm. uh, and the stark black colour against an almost golden yellow also gives him almost like a beetle-like appearance. Oh, yeah, no, he does have a bit of a beetle-like appearance, you're correct. Yes, and uh, of course the use of a more square shapes like we mentioned before gives him the immovable force feel, something that's overpowering you, Mm -hmm. and which Mm-hmm. is common with all Terminator design. And he has got that claw, the claw arm with a chainsaw. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. just give you commentary. Yeah, well, it, it, it very much ornate. It, it's very, it has a lot more things going on in general as compared to their pre-heresy design. I'm not too sure what is that giant skull on the pauldron meant to be, but that's another eye-catching element of Yeah, him. it's a symbol of death once again. But, right, okay. Um, I think just talking about this, a lot of that hostile design has become a lot more aesthetic, like with the spikes yep. up the top. You know, it, a lot of it is rather than hostile functional design it's much more aesthetic now it is it? it is very much so but i think that's just to show the chaos elements of them because they tend to be quite grandiose as well for their part so as we've done before i'm going to show you a couple of different designs more to show that you know i'm not quite just hiding them with just one or two designs so this is one of their more updated designs mm. with uh how they're looking just more updated art. Do you have any commentary on that? And then we'll show all of the alternates together. So they've got the horns here again. Mm -hmm. And with the red eyes, it does give them that evil look that they're meant to have to show that, you know, they are chaos and all that. And I do appreciate that they've done this very interesting claw-like grabby thing on the the backpack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and more spikes in that design as well. And the metal does seem a little bit brighter than the original design of the iron. Yes, yes, I agree with that. And I can see that they've brought back that mechanical skull that they had in their pauldron on Mm -hmm. the original design onto the knee instead. But now... What's interesting is that the mouth is open and it's got sharp teeth instead. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's just to give a bit of a nod to the original design that they've brought back in, but turn it chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, lots more on the tabard. There's There's been added a tabard there as well. It's plain, nothing much going on there, but there has to be like tatters and blood on it. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just to show they're violent. Yeah, yeah. Show, you know, typical chaos things. You've you've got them off, you know, killing people and so on. So this is all of the alternate designs together. So is there anything that stands out amongst any of them? Uh, Two of them, one with the top knot. And yep. his metal is very bright. Yep. And we have talked about the increase in reflective level of a metal mm-hmm. actually shows the futurism aspect. You mm-hmm, know, it's mm-hmm, more mm-hmm. modern of the showing of the times, essentially. Yeah. And I guess that's relevant here because this is them in the future. So they get a bit of an update. Yeah. So I actually think that this is a sort of poorer design decision on Mm, their part yeah but we'll get into that once we go into design analysis but just taking a look at all of those is there anything else that you wanted to comment on? so i would say the one with the longer gazelle type horns guy Mm -hmm. he has the most things going on with his design he's got a chainsaw sword He's got a lot of spiky elements going on with him. Mm -hmm. And they've 
upped the mechanical aspect in the chaos designs. Like you can see the arm; it's got a lot of these piston-like things. Yep, going. yeah, it's a mechanical arm, not not organic. Yeah. Yep. So it's, there's a lot more mechanical arms and uh, limbs that have been replaced in in them as well. Mm-hmm. I think in another one of the designs we saw that. Yeah, that was the very the first very first one. one. Huh? So my only thought here is that the increased use of black and yellow unfortunately showcases their home world more in this design compared to the original design. Well, so I I would agree and disagree, but I think we should move on to design Design analysis. analysis. All right, Sunny, can you give us your design analysis of these guys? So they have gotten a lot more character as compared to their pre-heresy design. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you get a bit more of a feel of what they are about in this one, I think, because would you say that they have a bit of a vengeful feel? Because yeah, of... yeah, no, that is very fair, but I, I, I'm well, well, sort of gonna... giving away some, some of the design the, yeah. versus lore stuff. Yeah, yeah, because like I feel by taking a look at the chaos and the demo side thing, That kind of comes through a bit more with the chaos design, right? Mm -hmm. And they're a lot more ornate. The hostile design has become more aesthetic, like we mentioned. And a lot more mechanical limbs have been introduced in this one as well. So I'm not too sure what that is about. Do they maybe there's a ritual where they cut off their limbs and, you know, fit it with mechanical parts or if it's just, you know, they lost it in battle and they need to replace it. It could be that. And there's a lot more use of the hazard stripes. It's more prominent. A lot more symbolism has been involved in this design as well as compared to the pre-heresy design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I feel like you're hitting a lot of the design Design versus versus law notes. The design versus law notes. So how about you go into what you think their law is about based off their design. Well, taking a big hint from your reaction earlier, I think their design is about taking vengeance, maybe against their Primarch or what's been done to them, or maybe they're taking revenge against the other legions, Mm -hmm. because the whole reason they were punished was because of their Primarch's jealousy, right? So they were punished for not getting as much accolades as compared to the other legions. So perhaps they're taking that anger out on them. Well, you know, a note on that jealousy, it's its a bit up in the air on that one. It might not have been jealousy. It might have just been he's trying to punish them because they're not doing their job. He felt that they weren't doing their job. Yeah. Wow, okay. What about the chaos stuff? Because you've just been saying they're chaos and I never said that. Well, I mean, taking a look at all the other legions that we have discussed, they all have the same sort of elements. Well, we've only seen one, to be uh, fair. Okay, but yeah. yeah, well, it's very similar with the horns and the spikes and everything, especially the big giveaway, the chaos symbol on their <laughs> chest. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean... Okay. I can't deny that. Yeah. As well as the hostile design has turned into a more aesthetic thing because it's just something that they incorporate as a design element. It's not much of a purpose involved as compared to their pre-heresy design. And you think that that's sort of symbolic of chaos, that chaos doesn't care as much about the function, they care more about the aesthetic? Yeah, I would say they just care more about how they present themselves. Interesting. And what would you say their character is like based off their design? Well, I would say that they're very vengeful like Mm -hmm, i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. they're probably very angry (laughs) and uh they're probably very cruel and uncaring and they're most probably plotting what they are going to do to bring someone down most of the time yeah well that would be very accurate okay should we move on to me telling you the law now yes please so as you have guessed they fell to chaos but only in the most technical sense you know how you noted that they have a lot of mechanical limbs Mm -hmm. That is because if they become tainted by chaos, for example, let's say that there's a chaos mutation, they'll just cut that off. Oh, okay. That's but why don't they want that part? Like, you know, with the Emperor's children, they kept their mutations. That's because they don't believe in like the chaos as a deity. They're more just like we have aligned ourselves with this side. They just hate the loyalists that much. Right, right, right. That they're gonna use the powers of chaos. They've got their own goals. They are not going into what chaos wants them to do do yeah they're just like okay fine you guys are the new bosses 
but we're doing what well, we no, want. Well, no, they do. don't even consider them the new bosses. They're more just like we're going to use chaos to As hurt the, the Imperium. Right. Okay, that's smart. That makes a lot of sense now. As far as the changes in designs go, they've actually not strayed too far from their original design, mm -hmm. and they don't have any or a lot of organic mutations or shapes like they did with the Emperor's children. Well, they've got the horns, but you're just yeah, saying like, that's more aesthetic again. Yeah, it's not very crazy. It's not very out there. It's very practical still, you know? Oh, I wouldn't call it practical at all, but anyway. Yeah, so, like, it's pretty much the original design and symbolisms, like with the skulls and things, but add the chaos symbol on top of that. So all those arrows and spikes that we see, mm -hmm. it's just parts of the chaos symbol, and they just apply it everywhere else, Yeah. right? So... And also they have got that mechanical leg. They don't really have the mutations as much. Not much color change mm -hmm. has happened as well. Yep. So it's pretty much like they're sticking to their own thing. Like you said, they're just using chaos as a tool. So you think the design very much fits the law? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, there's one thing that I think people will want me to bring up, but I don't actually think it has any effect on the design elements, which is the people that they wanted vengeance against the most was the Legion called the Imperial Fists. Right, okay. And I don't think that that really impacts their design at all. Yeah, at I least... wouldn't think so. Like, it doesn't really make sense for the ultimate goal or the thing that they are sort of expressing their rage upon would not really be a part of their design. I would say things that would come into design decisions is what they are about. Yeah, yeah. But I think people would be very upset if I didn't mention it. Right, okay. That's about as much as we could cover, so... Shall we move on? Final, Final notes. notes. I would say that their post-heresy design is more accurate to what they're about as compared to the pre-heresy design. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the only point I would bring up is the steel color being more, you know, bright. I, I That doesn't make as much sense to me. I think they should have kept it iron color. Yeah, you're talking about with some of the alternative designs. I would very much agree with that. For me, I think that the iron warriors should very much stick to that black and yellow. I know that Chaos have different war bands and so mm, on mm, and all mm. of that nonsense. But as we said, the whole idea of Bright Metals is all about futurism. It's exactly. all about hope. It's all about looking forward to the future. Uh, like we said in the in-depth color psychology one, like the, the only way that you can make Chrome to be bad is by environmental lighting. Yeah, so like we mentioned with the cyberpunk example, yeah, yeah, that yeah. reflects the dank undergrounds and neon lights. Of... Rather than the sunlight and yeah, the hopeful future. Exactly. Yeah. So that, But I could argue that they went for more brighter metal because it's more flashy and that's more chaos, but other than yeah, that... Yeah, no, but I, I, mean... I don't even think that that fits because, I mean, like, they're not more chaos, are they? Mm. I guess because that's the chaos mindset. Yeah, is yeah. What no, I'm I, I to get understand at. what you're saying, but they're not even the chaos mindset. They're very cold. They're very logical. They're very. Mm, that is true. That is yeah, true. Yeah, their, their focus is on vengeance and punishment and all of this sort of thing. It's not on you know like ha ha debauchery. Yeah, and no, I would also way. argue that that they're not hopeful because you know they don't have anything that shows optimism about them yeah yeah i i would 100 percent agree that going with brighter metals for them doesn't fit their aesthetic at all in fact one of the biggest problems i have is redesign, redesign. So here's one of the biggest problems I have with the Iron Warriors. So we've noted certain parts of their design is missing based off their lore and such, but I feel that their design is really, really strong. Mm, yes, I would say that it's quite strong and it does match their lore. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of adding a couple of elements. And... No, but see, like, that's the problem, right? I feel like if we add certain elements, like, it could take away from their overall design. So, for example, pre-heresy, right? We take a look at the whole Olympia thing and the Greek idea, mm. and we see almost no Greek elements with them, right? Exactly. But if we start adding those Greek elements, they stop looking simple and industrial yeah. and start becoming Greek. And like, that is not their aesthetic. Their aesthetic is we are cold, industrial. We come in, we will do all the things because we are machine men. We are the thing that Charlie Chaplin warned against. Right, exactly. They, they have no feelings. They have 
nothing in terms of you know anything to express. Yeah, in, just fact, here in fact, in fact, there's the one part of the law that I haven't actually said, which is their main motto, which is "iron within, iron without." Right, and they definitely express the iron. Yeah, yeah. But only just now do I realize that we didn't actually go over any of their art for the post-heresy part. And I think the reason for that is because they had such a smooth transition and that a lot of their art, I looked at it and I was like, is this pre or post-heresy? Right, okay. And some of it I was just like, you know what, like this doesn't actually add to the conversation. Right, okay. And when it comes to their units, so yeah, they'll use hell brutes, right? And this is very sort of getting into the guts of the law. Hell brutes are essentially demonic dreadnoughts, right? Oh, okay. Right, they're there's a lot to it, but essentially what they'll do is they'll just stuff some other guy into a dreadnought and just make them work for them sort of thing. Right, all right, okay. And, like, they'll use those chaotic elements, like, for example, the obliterators and the venom crawlers and, oh, what's the thing that the Archlord Discordant rides? I've forgotten what it's called for a second. I think it's uh, a Vex Machinor? Yeah. Yeah, Mac- yeah. Machinator. Yeah, Mac- Vex Machinator. Machinator! It sounds like something you get in a Happy Meal, not a Chaos. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> get he... your Chaos McDonald's today. Yeah, more like My get, spicy get your nuggets. Machinator for a limited time only. Yeah. But the thing is that there's nothing that I see that could be added to them because of some of their design rules. They have this idea of simplicity. They don't have an overly ornate design at the start. Sure, there's lots of those chaos elements, but even with that, it's just like, here, look at my sort of industrial design. There's there's nothing that I think that you could add to that which presents that in a better way or shows that more. Yeah, I would agree with that. And would you still have that same assessment about the use of black and yellow for the pre-heresy design? Yeah, yeah, no, because, like, the whole idea is when you see, like, that Terran Marine that we show at the Mm. very start, there's not a lot of difference. He's pretty much like, all right, 10% of you guys are all going to die. Now let's go off and crusade. And they're like, bloody hell. (laughs) so i think this is going to be our first redesign where we actually don't do a redesign right so we wouldn't even bother with changing the chevron patterns maybe no i think you could do different chevron patterns and that sort of thing but when it comes down to it that's not really a big change really that doesn't i I wouldn't call it a redesign per se. But what I think we should do is instead throw it to you, the listener. If you guys could comment what you think you would do, because with a lot of these previous ones, we've been collecting a couple of those comments in each one, and we've been like, okay, that's actually a much better idea than what we came up with. Exactly. But here, we just, we're just hitting bedrock. You know, we, we aren't getting anything where we're like, all right, this is something that could be really nice with them, right? I, I think that when it came to the lion and the purple head, we really had something. When it came to the emperor's children, we really had something with different and more interesting the units. units. Yeah. But I think here it's, okay, make a new demon engine thing. This demon engine has shooty guns or something like that. And I feel like I'm, I'm not designing an, a, a, anything new or... or- something that fits the law even better. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not designing anything which is for them. I'm just designing another demon engine. Yeah, so tell us in the comments what do you think would be a significant design improvement to these guys and we'd love to hear what you have to say. But there's one thing we have to say to you. And what's that? Keep Keep those brushes brushes wet. Bye-bye. your new commanding officer, Captain Seth Dozerman. My motto is simple. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Could probably just say it once. Democide.